Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And as you can see again, I'm not at my home base in the Appalachian Mountains of Southwest Virginia. This is another On the Road with Nature at Your Door episode. And this time I'm in Zermatt, Switzerland. In this video, I'll feature the climb of the 4,165 meter or 13,665 foot Brighthorn Mountain. I climbed this in September 2022 with my adventure friend, Julian, who is actually a former biology student of mine at the high school where I taught in Virginia. Our excursion today will begin in the village of Zermatt in the canton of Valais in Switzerland. Zermatt was once an entirely unassuming, quiet farming village isolated in the Alps. Its position amongst 4,000 meter peaks and in the shadow of the iconic Matterhorn made it a perfect place to develop into one of the world's most renowned ski areas where one can ski 365 days a year. For some, the village itself might be a bit too touristy today, but it's a great jumping off point for a myriad of amazing hikes and climbs. In this car-free town, cars are left behind really a great distance away, and to reach Zermatt, you're obligated to take a train to the village. The village itself is built around the main street called the Bahnhofstrasse, which is lined with restaurants, boutique, and now some really very high-end shops. You can still see some of the original classic charming Swiss buildings and chalets and barns mixed in. Looking up at the Matterhorn from the village never gets old. I was lucky enough to capture this amazing photo of the Matterhorn on one perfect morning when I was heading out to climb local peaks. On this particular morning, nature chose to highlight the Brighthorn, and it was thrilling to see it as we made our way to the cable car lit up by the early morning sun. We wend our way with our guide to the cable car system that'll take us to the Glacier Paradise or Klein Matterhorn Complex and Restaurant at an unbelievable 383 meters above sea level or about 12,739 feet. You gotta love climbing in Switzerland. The start of so many routes to 4,000 meter or above 13,000 foot peaks can be accessed in less than an hour by many of these cableways from different villages throughout Switzerland. As we proceed up the mountain on the cable cars, there is a number of places where riders can get off and hike into all sorts of scenic and beautiful places. The scenery from the glass enclosed cable cars was absolutely breathtaking. From our cable car, we could look up and see the bright horn peak looming above us. As is a theme in many of my Swiss Alpine videos, I can't help to notice how far the glaciers have melted and receded really in just my lifetime due to changes in climate. The Brighthorn is often the first 4,000 meter peak many people first attempt because of its easy accessibility and relatively non-technical route. However, it's still a 4,000 meter mountain and when you breathe you're only getting about 40% of the oxygen that you would at sea level. This mountain should never be climbed without proper acclimation, good fitness, and of course, a seasoned Swiss guide. As we cross the Brighthorn Plateau of the Theodol Glacier, I asked the guide some questions about the crevasses we were crossing. And in fact, there is apparently the bodies of a number of climbers that have never been recovered. They are buried under hundreds of feet of ice in that glacier. As we step out from the safety of the Matterhorn Glacier Paradise, we don our crampons over our sturdy mountain boots, put on our climbing harnesses, and rope together for safety. On this climb, like many of the other Swiss mountain climbs, climbing conditions have deteriorated and more crevasses have opened up on all the glaciers and in some places making the traditional normal routes impassable this year. I've climbed the Bright Horn several times already and this will be Julian's first time to summit this mountain. I've also climbed Castor and Polox, which are very close by, and overnighted at the Gide Dais Hut which is right on the border between Switzerland and Italy. It has 80 beds and a summer staff and prepares great meals for climbers and guides. And it's situated at 3,400 meters. Like I said, you gotta love Switzerland. I tried my best to get some quality photos in the moments that we pause to rest where we have our footing secured. It's difficult in photography to capture the enormity of space and size and 
distance and the steepness of these slopes in the photos. If you look very closely in some of these photos, you can gain some sense of that scale by seeing tiny dots, which if you look even more closely, are actually climbers roped together on the normal route to the summit. The first part of the climb was more a walk across the glacier and then winding our way around and across crevasses. Some of the crevasses were hidden by a layer of snow and you could see the edge of a crack opening up where the snow cover began to melt. Some of these snow bridges could be very, very thin. Finally, we hit the unrelenting ascent of the peak itself, and halfway up the summit, we had to negotiate a rather menacing-looking crevasse and finding a way around it or across it. Some of the photos on the slope look almost flat, but I assure you, my pounding heart told me it was really, really steep. It's always exhilarating to reach the summit of one of these mountains, and the views from the top, of course, are absolutely spectacular. As I look across, I only want to explore more and further. I'm thinking about climbing change and the rate of melting of these European glaciers. I wonder for how long somebody will be able to experience a view like this across these snow-capped peaks. We pause to celebrate and take in the scenery and take some photographs again, and then we get ready to begin the descent back to the safety of the facility at the top of the cableway. On all of the mountains I've climbed, we never stay here for very long. We don't hang out and have a picnic. The longer one stays on a mountain summit, the greater the odds that something could happen and the greater the risk. My guides have always kept me moving at a brisk pace across these mountains. On these glaciers and summits, we can only be temporary visitors. We return to the safety of the glacier paradise <laughs> where there's a restaurant and we celebrate and talk of the climb we just completed. It's just amazing in Switzerland how one moment you can be an extreme in environment and then the next moment you're in complete safety. In so many other climbs I've done around the world, we've had to carry like 50 pounds of gear on our backs, including our tents and food and cooking equipment, as well as all our climbing equipment. And sometimes it takes several days hiking through the wilderness to reach the point where you can begin your summit attempt. Here in Switzerland, the access is just so easy and so unbelievable that I've been able to climb 15 or 20 of the highest peaks in the European Alps. I hope you enjoyed this on the road episode of Nature at Your Door. Remember, if you like my channel, please give me a like and subscribe. And remember, I cover all things nature, and now I have over 250 videos of nature that you find in the Appalachian Mountains and on the East Coast. I hope you'll check out my playlist and enjoy my channel. Thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.